Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a great weekend so far. In this class everybody we are looking at IELTS speaking part two, the cue card, the long part. And this cue card it's an interesting one. You will need to speak about a person that you would like to spend the day with. Everybody, this is a members chat class. In order to join the chat, you have to be a channel member. Welcome Elizabeth, Fuang, Romelia. Nice to have so many members in the class ready to learn. Uh, everybody, as per usual, this class is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are our websites. They power these live classes. They contain our materials, our practice exams, videos, audio materials full of great tools to help you prepare for your next IELTS exam. This is our academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com. Just click that big red button that's right above my head there uh, to join our premium IELTS package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Our goal is to help as many students as possible. We are an IDP affiliate, we're a British Council partner, and we are an IELTS test registration center. I'm a British Council agent. We are certified to get you to your goal. Um, your uh, general IELTS course is at gieltshelp.com. It's with the green background. And again, you just click that big red button that's right behind me there, and you're on your way. Uh, to learning uh, for the general IELTS. When you click that on either the academic or the general, we have a new code for you. It's Unity 9, together 9. And you can use that code for a 10% discount on the websites. Of course, uh, we also have apps for you. The apps link to the websites. We have the app Academic IELTS Help for the Academic IELTS and General IELTS Help for the General IELTS. And on the websites, we have lots of helpful blogs for you on every topic for the IELTS. This one is for speaking part two, talking about a fit person. So the category for today obviously is talking about a person. So here's a bit of extra help when you need to talk about a person who you think is fit. Instagram is IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help. Our Instagram uh, profiles have lots of followers uh, for the vocabulary, the live class schedules um, that are there for you. Hi Sevde, hi Ghazi, nice to have you joining in on the class. So to learn with the world's most advanced online IELTS course, join our programs. Many of it, or a lot of it, is for free, and a lot of it is for a very low price that will help you to achieve those higher bands. Uh, students, if you ever have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, admin at aehelp.com. We like questions. They help us all grow and develop, so questions are good. Go ahead and send them when you have them. Um, all right, everybody, so our schedule. Right now, we've got speaking part two, the cue card. We'll go through it together. We'll practice. We'll learn some tips and strategies, some vocabulary. Then we'll have speaking part three, where everybody can join the chat. All right. Um, and Fuang says she's watched the latest video. I'm in a red shirt. Okay, Fuang, I think you're talking about, uh, let's see, uh, this video right here. Yeah, it's our newest video. Um, this video, it's a good one. It's got a lot of great advice and vocabulary for you. It's a brand new speaking video that we just put up on YouTube. 
two and a half hours ago. So check that out. We used a little bit of a green screen action there as well. So keeps it a little bit interesting <laughs> for everybody. Um, all right, yeah, check out that video. It's a brand new video. It's free. It's complete. Part one, part two, part three. It's sponsored by Baby Code IELTS. It's an app that uh, helps you with your uh, speaking. All right. Um, so again, yeah, we got speaking part two, part three uh, over the course of the next three hours. Uh, and then uh, we've got our next class on Thursday, the 28th, which will be speaking part one, followed by a couple of classes on the 29th, task two, listening parts three and four from the exam that we started yesterday. And then on the 30th, uh, we've got uh, speaking part two, speaking part three. So I will post the schedule later today. So definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get notifications of these live classes. Okay, everyone, uh, this is IELTS speaking part two. And it's speaking. <laughs> so make sure to uh, speak and repeat. Copy what I say, copy how I say it. Uh, do your best to match my speed, my intonation. I speak with, um, like I always say, a West Coast North American English. I definitely speak strong English. So especially in these classes, you hear me really control speed, intonation, pronunciation, emphasis, uh, stress on words and on, on syllables. It has a lot to do with public speaking. This is one form of public speaking. Another form of public speaking is the IELTS speaking interview and part two especially okay so keep that in mind um, there's it's kind of interesting because I think there's a lot of misconceptions a lot of misunderstandings of what the IELTS is what the IELTS speaking test is and even examiners even people that work in the IELTS uh, misunderstand at times I think the reality of the IELTS speaking situation and they think about it like oh it's a conversation it's not a conversation okay it's more like public speaking and that's a really really important point to consider as you're practicing and planning your speaking okay so I'm going to start with this advice today before we get into the cue card so contrary to popular belief there's a nice expression by the way uh, again repeat after me contrary to popular belief okay make sure you're repeating me that's a very useful expression even in your speaking so sometimes I fear that when I'm giving advice people are like oh it's just advice I'll wait until we actually practice <laughs> no it's not just advice this is English you can use this in your answers if you disagree with uh, the popular belief, you can say contrary to popular belief. Everybody got that? So contrary to popular belief, the IELTS speaking is not just an everyday or even a professional conversation. Okay, Fuang says yes. Elizabeth says Got it. Good. Okay. So contrary to popular belief, the IELTS speaking is not just an everyday or even a professional conversation. It is a presentation. It is public speaking. Okay. Now, let's you're probably going like okay but it's just one person and you're having a conversation how is that public speaking all right it's a fair question i would say um why <clears throat> so that's a really good question always ask why why is the question that's human that is human if i had to give a synonym for human i would say why okay why is a synonym for human um why well Think logically, right? What are the similarities between public speaking, uh, giving a presentation in front 
of an audience and the IELTS exam, the IELTS speaking exam. Let's see how many you can identify. Okay, and this will make you smarter. So again, this will help you to realize that it's not about what this guy says on the internet or what that examiner says or what Adrian says or what that woman says, but it's really logic, right? So what are the similarities between public speaking and the IELTS speaking section? Okay, so Sevda, before you jump forward and talk about wanting to meet the president, right? Let's really focus in on understanding what you need to do for the IELTS speaking exam and especially for this kind of a concept like part two. This will really help you to find the right direction and not only find the right direction but actually find really good materials to help you prepare. Okay, so we'll put that up below here. So keeping this in mind helps you to find direction in your IELTS studies and materials that are going to be truly effective, or I should say that are truly effective uh, for high band scores. Okay? So, Romelia says you have to get the attention of your audience. Okay? So, you need to get the attention of the examiner, sure. There are lots. Students, let me tell you, there are at least five uh, very similar um, concepts uh, between public speaking and the IELTS speaking interview. Okay? All right. Fuang says, confidence and the ability to make up a story. Being clear when you get your message across. Elizabeth says, the content. Let's even step back one, okay? How about that? People are nervous when they're public speaking and they're nervous on IELTS. Everyday conversations with your friends, your family, you're not nervous, okay? All right, that makes sense, right? So just like when you learn public speaking and you learn to control your stress level and gain confidence, so too you should learn to control your stress and your confidence when you're public speaking, right? Okay, so that's one uh, similarity. What's another one? Anybody? Romelia, I agree. The most important is clarity to get your message across, right? Um, in everyday conversations, even though we like to think we are, we're not as concerned about clarity. Okay, that's true as well. Okay, so uh, that's important. All right. What else? Elizabeth says body language. Yeah, here's an interesting one, and this all connects kind of to that clarity, right? So your audience is, in this case the examiner, in public speaking are strangers. You don't know them, right? That's a very very important idea to keep in mind, okay? So again, write it down, students, copy, repeat after me, right? So your audience, they're strangers, okay? They don't know them. That is a big, important point to keep in mind. It's very different when you're talking to people who know you, okay? Your audience, they're strangers, okay? 
they do not know you or your history or your way of speaking. This is very different from having a casual conversation every day with your friends, your coworkers, your family that have background information on you. Okay? Exactly. Ghazi says the same. Ghazi says the listener is unknown. It's a stranger. Right? Of course. Okay? So, your style of communication, right? Elizabeth says body language, enunciation, pronunciation, intonation. These all become a lot more important when we are speaking with strangers, okay? And that's all for that clarity, right? So you're probably starting to realize like, oh, wait a second, yeah. IELTS speaking is basically public speaking. I'm in front of a one man, one woman panel doing public speaking on a random set of questions and topics, right? So now you're realizing that, oh, IELTS is basically public speaking or presentation in front of a one man, woman, a panel on unknown topics, right? And of course, if you've ever taken classes on public speaking, you will never ever tell a person don't pay attention to body language, right? Because you're just like, that's that's almost ridiculous to say that, right? No, no, almost no person in the world will ever, ever support that idea. They will say, no, you, you absolutely have to pay attention to what you're doing with your face, your hands, your body, your voice when you're speaking to strangers, right? It's very important because they don't know you and it's our instinct to pick up on those cues. They're called cues. They're reference points, right? Okay. So keep that in mind. So why am I telling you all this? You're like, okay, Adrian, fine. You've convinced me public speaking and IELTS speaking. They're very, very similar. I'm convinced. Great. Now what? Right? Well, what's the actionable, right? That which that should be your next step. Okay. And again, keeping this in mind helps you to find direction in your IELTS studies and materials that are truly effective for high band scores. So the question here is, what are the actionables? What do I do? I've recently discovered actionable does not have really a plural form. It's actionable, not actionables. So what are the actionable? What do I do? Okay. Well, I mean, the simplest is learn public speaking. Okay. There are classes on and offline that you can join. Okay. Uh, one great one, and these guys don't sponsor us. I don't even think they know about us. Um, they are possibly the biggest and most uh, famous uh, public speaking club that's free okay, uh, in the world. They don't need sponsorships. They don't need people like us spreading the word because they do quite well on their own. Um, is Toastmasters. basically like an NGO. Um, a lot of, in psychology, one interesting fact we learned is people stress as much when they have to do public speaking as when they have to go to war. That's right, so when a person is told you need to go to war and they become really stressed, that stress level is comparable to the stress level wh that people experience when they are told you have to get in front of those 20, 50, 200 people and give a speech. Okay, so it's a very stressful situation. So it's not a surprise that there are lots of free communities and groups where you can practice uh, giving speeches for free. Okay, 
Toastmasters is a great one. Um, if you are not familiar, I highly recommend Googling it, not just for the IELTS, but as a life skill, okay? So what are the actionables? What do I do? Well, A, learn public speaking, okay? Focus on public speaking classes, of course, in English, right? So rather than just focusing your studies on conversations, it's a good, it's good practice, right? Uh, focus on learning public speaking. If you learn some tips, tricks, strategies for good public speaking, they will absolutely be beneficial to your IELTS speaking exam. Uh, not only that, they will boost your confidence. That's a big part of these clubs. Uh, if you go online um, and you search for public speaking clubs in my area, I'm sure you will find them and I sh I'm sure there will be some in English. Okay. All right. Um, so that's one of the actionables, right? B. Okay. Uh, practice your public voice. Louder, stronger, controlled, okay? So believe it or not, everybody, <laughs> the way that I'm talking right now in these classes is not the way that I speak to my family, my friends, and the people around me in everyday conversations. I usually don't tell my children like, hey, Stephanie, let's make a plan for today. You know what we're going to do? We're going to play some games. <laughs> I don't I do not speak with my children in this way. I do control my voice because I do it so much for work that I do control it in other aspects of my life, but I certainly have a different voice, a different persona when I'm educating compared to uh, when I'm speaking with my children speaking with my friends and family, okay? Um, I simply wouldn't have the energy. Okay, I use a lot more energy in these classes than I do in one hour of speaking with my friends, of course, right? Because I'm delivering a message, all right? <laughs> Elizabeth says, I believe it, <laughs> all right? So practice your public voice, louder, stronger, controlled. Pay attention to your body language. Yeah, you don't get marked on it. Okay, the examiner's not saying, oh, he just raised his hand to emphasize that point. No, they're not marking you on it, but you are marking yourself on it. What does that mean? That means when you're using body language, your communication is better. Your message is stronger, okay? So do pay attention. Uh, I promise you when you take public speaking classes, they will educate you on the importance of body language, especially when communicating to strangers. And that will affect your mark in the IELTS indirectly, okay? So pay attention to body language as this does have a major indirect, not direct, but indirect effect on your mark. And it's silly to tell people to not worry about that, okay? All right, absolutely it does. Right, same thing with uh, eye contact. <laughs> Ghazi says some dads are serious. Yes, Ghazi, you're right, because in certain situations, right, and Ghazi's a dad, so Ghazi knows this, in certain situations, dads are like public speakers because you have a very important message to get to your children. And Ghazi, you're right, I agree with you. So when I see that my daughter ran across a road without looking both ways, then I use public speaking. I stop, I look her in the eye, and with my hands I go, no, that cannot happen. You have to look both ways, left, right, left, before you cross the road. It's very dangerous not to do that. And I use a strong voice, I use body language. Why? Because the message is so important and it has to be clear. It's for the purpose of protecting her life. So then I switch into Adrian, the presenter mode, and she knows it, okay? And I'm sure you do the same, okay? That is actually a very good tip for parenting. Know when to switch to public speaking mode with your children, okay? All right, so learn public speaking, practice your public voice, 
pay attention to body language. Pay attention to your choice of vocabulary. And grammar, of course, right? So again, we're much more attentive of what we say and how we say it when we're public speaking, okay? All right, Elizabeth says, good tip. Yeah, don't get angry, right? You don't yell at your, uh, so you don't go, don't cross the road like that, blah, 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 right? That doesn't work. If you yell at your audience, what do they do? <laughs> right? Ask that question. It's the same. It's an important tip for parents, uh, Elizabeth. So if you're yelling at your audience, they turn off or they stand up and they leave. Uh, your child doesn't have the option to leave often, so they just turn off. So instead of yelling and arguing, you want a public speaking voice, right? Okay, uh, and of course, E, there's more, we could keep going, but I'm going to mention one last one is structure. Structure becomes much more important in public speaking and in IELTS, right? And it's true for part two, and we're going to get to this part two right now. So structure. You need to have a clear beginning to what you're saying. There has to be background. There has to be foundation. Then there has to be content, useful content, interesting content, and there has to be a finish, okay, where you conclude, you finalize, you maybe give a message, and then you stop. And you need that structure. Otherwise, people don't know why they're there. They get lost. They don't understand. So structure becomes much more important. Okay, learning correct structure is key. All right, so here we have this cue card. Let's take a look at it and let's jump right in. I took quite a bit of time explaining the importance of this concept of public speaking and the IELTS speaking and how they are very much akin to each other. And I hope that you keep that in mind and stop thinking about the IELTS as a conversation or even as just a professional meeting, but think about it more like a public presentation, okay, All right? Even um, when you think about it like a job interview, right? The big difference between a job interview and IELTS is that if you get the job, you go back and you can explain more and you can show more of yourself. In the IELTS, it's a one-time deal. It's like public speaking. You go, you speak, you leave, right? Okay. Welcome, Chen. Nice to have a moderator in today. Hi, Chen. I hope you're doing great. Okay. So, with that business aside, so if I do not agree with the majority of people, what's the expression? I taught this to you at the beginning. Just checking how much of your or how many of you are paying attention. So, a little bit of a quick quiz to test your learning in these live classes. I want you to be active, not just passive, right? Another good tip, be active, don't be passive, right? So when you disagree with the majority of people, uh, what is the vocabulary uh, that we use? What's the expression? I just taught it at the beginning of class. Who remembers? Who gets my th Saturday thumbs up? for answering that question. Okay, that's a big, it's, a, it's called a pop quiz. That's the word for it in English. When you suddenly you get a quiz question that you weren't expecting, it's called a pop quiz. There's my pop quiz for you. Lots of learning, right? I'm teaching you as we go along. So pop quiz, when you disagree with the majority of people, what's the expression that's used? Yes, nice, Elizabeth is paying attention. Elizabeth, you get my Saturday thumbs up emoji. There you go, you're the first one to answer that question. It was contrary to popular belief. That's the expression that we use, good for you. Elizabeth is so happy she's laughing. Okay. So uh, speaking part two, the examiner says that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you a card with some questions. You will have one minute to read these. Think about your answers. Then you will have one to two minutes to speak. 
You can take notes in the one minute preparation time. You have your note paper there and your pencil. Is that clear? Then you answer, yes, crystal clear. Then the examiner will say, a talk about a person you want to meet for a day. Okay. So you look at the card. Um, now read this sentence again. Okay. Even though the examiner has read it for you or has said it for you, read it again. Talk about a person you want to meet for a day. Who the person is. Okay. So you should say who the person is. Where do you want to meet them? What do you want to talk about? Why do you choose to meet this person? Okay, now if you're having difficulty understanding, definitely read it a second time. And even if you think you understood the card, make sure to check those questions as you're speaking. Okay? All right, now you realize that, okay, in this case, I have to talk about a person. Now, when you're talking about a person, what is important to keep in mind to, keep, uh, to speak clearly? What should you say to a stranger about the person? Okay, what should you say to the stranger about this person to help them understand? this person okay so what should you okay Ghazi said is a little bit about the appearance yeah so help them visualize right again it's kind of like public speaking in good public speaking we help our audience visualize what we're talking about okay and then Fuang says Talk about their personality backed by actions. Okay. So one of the most common mistakes, keep this in mind, I would say it's the most common uh, mistake when candidates uh, talk about people in part two is stating lots of personality and forgetting to explain the actions. Um, so a lot of students, what they do is I would love uh, to meet um, my uh, cousin Sally for a day because she lives uh, far away and I haven't seen her in over 10 years. She is uh, such a lovely and kind person. She is hard working and just a lot of fun to hang out with. I would love to meet her and uh, talk to her so we could have some good laughs. She is uh, so fun and enjoyable. And then this is where the repeats start to happen. Student gets uh, lost and then says and says uh, and that's it. And then you get that kind of look from the examiner like um, you just spoke for 40 seconds and basically repeated the same information three times. I can only give you a band uh, five for that because it's not even fluent. You didn't complete the two sections or the uh, two minutes, right? So. Um, if the examiner does not stop you, okay, that means that you, you should use as much of the two minutes as possible. Um, and uh, that's where they're really testing your fluency. Okay. So arguably part two is the greatest test of fluency in the speaking section. Keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, 
uh, because it's the it's the longest answer. It's, it's also called the long response, right? So you have to show fluency, okay? Um, Ghazi says, silly Sally. Um, Fuang says, really, that's just a band five? Yeah, it is, right? And so you need details and you need personality to be backed up by action. So in this case, what you really want for your answer, okay, is something like this, okay? I would love to meet my cousin Sally for a day because she lives far away. She is currently in the UK and I have to get on a 10 hour flight to be with her. Uh, so I haven't seen her for over 10 years, right? Right away, a little bit of detail doesn't hurt, okay? She is such a lovely and kind person. The last time we met, she took me out to a fancy uh, five-star restaurant and bought me uh, dinner and drinks. And then we went uh, to the zoo uh, where she volunteers as a uh, part-time veterinary assistant. Okay, uh, so I just literally made that up. Like as I was saying that, I made that up, right? What was I thinking? I was thinking, well, a kind person. What is kindness? Kindness is a person who gives. So let's say she gives to me, right? What does she give to me? She bought me dinner, right? And you're probably thinking, well, how is Adrian coming up with that um, concept or that idea so quickly. Uh, Sally is not a cousin of mine. I, I don't I don't have a cousin named Sally living in the UK. She never bought me dinner and drinks. She never volunteered at the zoo. I'm literally just imagining the story, right? But I'm just taking typical situations where people show kindness and putting them into this context, right? Okay. She is hardworking and just a lot of fun to hang out with. Um, she not only volunteers her time to help animals, but also people. Uh, she works at a soup kitchen on the weekends. During the weekdays, she um, is a computer uh, programmer for uh, Google and takes uh, care of her three children. Okay, so now we've got a, oh wow, Sally is really a hard worker. Okay, I would love to meet her and talk to her so we could get some good laughs. Now I check the question. Okay, so check questions okay and the questions say um, where do you want to meet them what do you want to talk about why do you choose to meet this person and I haven't actually really answered a lot of that so I would definitely want to answer some of those questions at this point right it would be great to catch up with her about all that has happened over the past 10 years and I would love to sit down with her in her living room as she lives in a beautiful uh, house on the outskirts of London. We could uh, sip some famous British tea and spend hours reminiscing. Reminiscing means talking about our memories. Pay attention again to vocabulary, everybody. Uh, reminiscing. 
I would choose to spend my 24 hours with her since I feel that she is very much like me in her style of thinking and perspectives on life. Okay. So uh, she is fun and enjoyable and it would be a fantastic day. Okay. Now uh, we are at the band nine level. Okay. With those details and backing up uh, those personalities with those actions. Okay. All right. Makes sense, everybody. So that's the difference. So see, that's how you can expand. And that's all that you need to do. When you talk about a person, just think about, okay, personality plus action, personality plus action. Okay. Now here's a quick question, uh, members. Is it better to talk about an unknown person like Sally, or is it better to talk about a person like Einstein, uh, somebody that uh, everybody knows for this cue card? So is it better to talk about a novel person like a cousin, in this case, Sally, or to talk about a famous uh, person that is well known? Uh, like, uh, let's say, Einstein, who I have the uh, cartoon picture of on the thumbnail. Okay, so Einstein. Okay, it doesn't say the person has to still be alive or maybe like Johnny Depp. Right? Fuang says, I think cousin Sally is better. Maya says, Sally is better. Romelia says the latter. I agree with Romelia. Why, Romelia? So um, I agree with Romelia here. It's probably better to speak about a well known, famous person. Why? Romelia says the examiner knows them. Exactly. Right? The examiner knows them it is easy to visualize and empathize okay um again uh jumping back to public speaking right good public speakers speak with visual language and give good examples keep that in mind so good public uh, speakers use a lot of visual language and empathetic language. I should say empathetic content. It helps them make a connection with the crowd and it helps clarity, right? Okay, so they can fill in the blanks. Humans are really good at filling in the blanks, okay? Our brains fill in a lot of blanks when we interact with the world around us and uh, situations that help are easy for us to fill in the blanks make us more interested and um, help us to be coherent okay so uh, keep that in mind okay put that up there as well with the public speaking okay we can put that as F. Good public speakers use a lot of visual language and empathetic content. So too should you on the aisles. Okay, makes sense, right? So yes, you understood my conversation about Sally and what I said about Sally. Had I spoken about Einstein, right? It might have even been better and you might have liked it even more. Um, here at the end, um, the examiner is probably thinking, that's nice. Sally seems like a cool person. Okay. Now, uh, versus 
Einstein. <laughs> Sally versus Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, right? Uh, Sally versus Einstein. I, I, first of all, Einstein. I would love to meet the famous uh, physicist Einstein for the day. I'm talking about the Austrian-born uh, legend with the big curly uh, gray hair and iconic mustache. How many of you just visualized Einstein? Okay. And of course, that big, friendly, ear to ear smile. Okay. So how many of you just uh, visualized Einstein when I said that? Okay, I'm sure all of you have seen a picture or two of Einstein, whether it's a cartoon picture like on the thumbnail or uh, the actual pictures of him from when he was alive. There are posters about him. There's memes about him. So, um, so uh, that uh, for sure is very iconic. And of course, you all have this crystal clear. Sally, meh, foggy at best, right? Einstein picture clarity right picture clarity okay that's the difference so um you know just like you don't get marked on body language uh in the official ielts but it's still very important what you choose as your answer or in this case who you choose as your answer again you don't get marked so the examiner is not going to mark you lower for choosing sally But they will mark you better for being more coherent uh, and clear. And that is greatly assisted by choosing Einstein. Okay? All right? Makes sense? Domenico, keep that in mind. So, Domenico, today when you walk into your speaking exam and you see that part two topic, then think about, okay, what kind of an answer can I choose here that this examiner probably has some information on and that they have clarity on, okay? So, that's where we're at. Um, students, let's practice this. So, let's practice this part two. I hope that many of you have been thinking about a person that you would love to meet for a day and we're going to uh, do some volunteering and I hope that many of our viewers that are watching our premium students our members are going to uh, volunteer I'll show you how to do that and again it doesn't have to be perfect just really focus on practicing these concepts that I introduced to you in this class so far. So let's go to our website. This is the general IELTS website. We're going to the academic or I'm going to use the academic for this, but you can use the general IELTS website as well. Uh, click on the big red button that's just above my head there to join the premium version of our course. Again, we are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. Once you have accessed your My Student account, you will see there are lots of goodies. Many of you who are regular students will notice that there's this new button, the Join Live Class, that will be uh, effective in October. Okay. And right now, we're going to click on this uh, Student Partner Speaking button and then uh, accept the terms that you're going to be polite and you will see a group of fantastic students uh, Mezad, Shahzad, Imrul, Sarav, Ghazi, Tatiana many of them are premium students many are premium students on the website and channel members as you're noticing Ahmed Mansour just volunteered at the bottom here um, and I can see that because of this orange one and what Ahmed did is Ahmed found me I am in here as master 
and uh, you can click the little blue envelope next to my name like here with Tatiana and then uh, once you've clicked that you can send me a message Ghazi just sent me a message as well let's check in with Ahmed so Ahmed says hello sir um, okay hi Ahmed Are you ready to try this part two? Or not try, but do to uh, do this uh, part two. And then hopefully Ahmed, sorry Ahmed, I'm gonna correct your name there. That's what I meant to write. Um, Ahmed is hopefully there and we can get into this part two. Let's do it, Ahmed. Hello. Hi Ahmed, how are you? Uh I'm good, sir. What about you? I'm doing fantastic. Ahmed, it's nice to see you back and practicing more. That's the right attitude. Yeah, thank you for having me, sir. <laughs> good. All right. Um, Ahmed, let's do it. Uh, before we begin, can you just tell everybody what part of the world you're in? Uh, I'm from Mansoura city in Egypt. In Egypt. All yes. All right. I know it's cliche, but I have to ask, have you ever seen the pyramids? Uh, yes. I see the pyramids and sphinxes, yes. I think I'm a bit, I haven't, so I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have to go to Egypt one day. It's it's definitely on my bucket list to see the pyramids. Um, and yes, I'm yeah. I, I invite you to visit uh, Egypt and... Uh, you would be my guest. <laughs> Thank you, Ahmed. Yeah, pyramids, of course, yes. are one of the seven wonders of the world. So it's uh, it's uh, quite a, quite something to see. All right, Ahmed, let's get into the speaking part two. I will start you off. Uh, give me a nice full answer, and then uh, we'll talk about it a little bit um, for everybody's learning. Okay. So here we go. Uh, talk about a person you want to meet for a day. Your one minute preparation time is up please begin speaking um, I would love to meet with Bufisov Amu is a Bufisov in Arabic and Islamic studies in Belgium I meet him uh, I, I didn't see him since 2015 and uh, I would love to see him again for one day. Uh, I consider Professor Amr is my inspiration and good father. And good father. I would like to talk him with his journey from Egypt to Europe. Uh, I, I would love to he tell me about his. Uh, his dreams and uh, his updates uh, in university what uh, advantages and disadvantages did he see in Europe because I want to study in the same university that he studies I, I would love to meet him in the Netherlands or Belgium uh, if not I would love to see him in my village because it's from near village from my home. Okay, your two minutes is up. I will stop you there. All right, um, Ahmed, not bad, not bad at all. I would say that that is um, a band six. If you were a little bit faster, a little bit more fluent, it would have been a band seven even, okay? Um, a couple of good points, okay? Let me let me talk a little bit about what you did really well there, Ahmed. Uh, first of all, I loved your structure. So you really paid attention to the card. You were looking at the questions and you paid attention to responding to each of the questions in sequence. And that is a good way to do part two, where you literally just look at the card, you look at each question and you very clearly with some detail answer each question. 
Now, if you combine that, Ahmed, a little bit with what I was saying about appearance, personality, and action, it would help you to be a little bit more fluent and give some more details, and that could definitely assist you with getting a higher band score. So it's a combination of that with the questions. Like, let me ask you this. You said it's Professor Abu, right? Um, uh, no, uh, uh, Amo, A A M O A. Mm -hmm. a, -A, -M -A, -A -M -A. I'm sorry, I didn't pronounce the name uh, right. I'm sorry. Amu? A M U? No, R. R. A M R. A M R. Amar? Yes. Oh, yes, Amar. Yes, Amar. Okay, Amar. Okay, Professor Amar. I got you. Okay, um, and not, so, and, and I mean, that, that on, at the end of the day, that wouldn't matter too much to the. Um, to the uh, examiner because the examiner doesn't know who the person is so for them it could be amu abu amar so it wouldn't they wouldn't mark you on that one but uh, anyway uh, as uh, as opposed to einstein if you don't pronounce einstein correctly that would be a problem because then the examiner knows that you're trying to say einstein right so that's one of the interesting yeah. pieces now here um ahmed what does amar look like let help me to see amar so for instance how old is he uh, it's from his 70s. I think he's uh, 75. 75? No, no, it's 70, 75. Oh, 30, 35. Okay, got you, got yeah. you. All right. Yeah. Okay, practice those TH sounds. Th -th -th 30. Yes. Yeah, um, 30. Okay, um, so, and what does he look like? Um, he have a uh, black hair. Is uh, is uh, taller is uh, is an Egyptian you like Egyptians I okay. don't know <laughs> he's an Egyptian sure is he fit is he strong is he big is he small is he short is he tall yes he's a uh, is a big and uh, is a tall yeah you mean his appearance uh, should I do this in uh, do that in audits yes just one sentence um I think uh, okay. I said is a is a is work is a professor in Belgium so yeah we want uh, to see him right so I want to see him so all I need is this sentence and this one sentence can really just help your listener who's a stranger to picture this person so I just wrote this on the on the screen you'll see it there Ahmed so he is a big tall fit Egyptian man in his mid 30s with dark hair and dark eyes Okay, so practice a little bit of describing people um, and not just people, but for other topics like places or objects, practice describing what, what they look like, okay? So just repeat this after me, Ahmed. He is a big, tall, fit Egyptian man in his mid-30s with dark hair and dark eyes. Ahmed, just uh, co just copy me. Just repeat me. If you need, use the use the writing. He is a big, tall, fit Egyptian man in his mid thirties. Is a big, fit, tall Egyptian man in his mid thirties. With dark hair and dark eyes. With dark hair and dark eyes. Okay, good. Now I can put kind of a picture to him, right? So I can kind of imagine him. And yes, you should do that on IELTS when you're talking about a person, especially when it's a person that we have no idea of. We don't know who he is, right? So um, so you want to add that little bit of uh, detail. Now, uh, you, you said, I didn't see him since 2015. I would love to see him again for one day. I consider him as my inspiration. And uh, it's not a good father and a father figure. Can you repeat after me? And a father figure. And a and a father figure. Figure. Yep. Father. What does this mean? Figure. Then? It means father. he is like a father to you. He is like a father type person to yeah. you. So he's a role model, right? We say and a father figure. And the father figure. Okay. All right. Good. Now. I'm guessing that he's a father figure because he has some personality or some qualities that are admirable. So maybe he's very smart, he's very hardworking, right? 
Yes, it's Viva Hard Working, I travel from Egypt to the Netherlands to study master and PhD, and now with a professor in Leuven University at Belgium. I can give you a 6.5 now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> see, so that's how much it matters, right? So probably yeah. some of your classmates now in the chat are going to be like, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> right? So he <laughs> is a very hard working. He is currently um, researching and teaching uh, 12 hours a day. Uh, to complete his PhD. Okay, I'm just giving an example here. Uh, PhD in, and then you can, okay. So exactly, uh, right? So that's what I was saying. That's the personality backed up by action. And that's a very good example of it, right? A person who is extremely hardworking. We all have a good idea of what it takes to get a PhD. It takes a lot of effort. So you explain that he's working on his PhD in Arabic studies at this university, studying, researching, teaching 10 hours a day. Okay, so Ahmed, those are the missing pieces. So you're, you have a really good idea. You're answering the Q card add in those details and you're going to get a band seven for sure okay say it faster you'll get a band nine okay yeah okay sir right. thank you mr Adrian. you're very very welcome ahmed keep up the good studies and i'll see you again okay okay sir thank you all right bye ahmed bye bye sir bye what an intelligent guy ahmed great Thumbs up to Ahmed. Yes, excellent, excellent work, Ahmed. Keep using that premium course. You're on the right track, okay? So those details, everybody, super important, all right? <clears throat> okay, um, let's give Elizabeth a chance. She's been very active in the class, and I don't think she's had a chance uh, to volunteer. Elizabeth, absolutely. I don't always see you volunteering. Are you ready? I know the weekend's a bit better sometimes for students. Okay, Elizabeth, let's give this a shot. So if you're there... Give me a sign and we'll just jump right in. Now, we've heard a couple unfamiliar people like Sally and uh, Professor Amar. Um, some of the volunteers think about some famous figures, okay? Some figures that we might all be familiar with, okay? Hi, Elizabeth. Good morning, Adrian. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? I'm also doing very well. Thank you for asking. Elizabeth, can you remind everybody where you are from? Um, I'm originally from Colombia, but I'm living here in, in a small town. It's called Turner in Oregon, West Coast of the United States. Oregon, West Coast. Just a hop and a skip past the state of Washington from me, right? Yes, we are. I, 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 separate. I can't remember if I asked you, have you visited British Columbia yet? No, I haven't. Okay. I, someday I want to go there. Awesome. Well, we're just like Oregon, a little bit bigger. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, you're not going to feel out of place. You're going to be like, oh, this place looks a lot like Oregon. <laughs> it's familiar. Okay. Yeah. Oh, really good. <laughs> big, big, big green forests. <laughs> Coast, oh. Coastline, <laughs> very similar to Oregon. <laughs> so, oh, that's yeah. good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I wish you'd go with that. <laughs> yeah, it's fun for sure. Visit the island. Visit Vancouver Island. All right, Elizabeth, let's do this part two. Um, okay. Here we go. I will start you off and then uh, I'll give you feedback at the end. So that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will ask you or I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to prepare your answers and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. Talk about a person you want to meet for a day. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Uh, if I had the opportunity to meet a person for one day, I would meet the famous actor, um, director. He's an American actor. His name is Denzel Washington. Uh, he's about six foot one. Uh, he has a dark hair, brown eyes. 
and he has received numerous awards. The New York Times naming the greatest actor of the 21st century. He lives in Hollywood, <clears throat> Los Angeles, and he plays action and true story movie. That's why I, that's why it's one of my favorites. And my favorite movies is Deja Vu. And actually, I have a small collection of DVD movies at home because some of the, his movies, we can find them on Netflix. So I keep buying them to watch them, his movies whenever I want to watch them. I like him because his personality, his, he got big smile and he seems like he's a really nice person. Okay, I'm gonna stop you there and give you some feedback. Please. All right, um, Elizabeth, uh, good. So that's about two minutes um, and the examiner will stop you at two minutes. Uh, so combine what you're doing with what uh, Ahmed was just doing and you guys have a really good answer, okay? <laughs> So you focused a lot on his personality, explaining who he is, a famous person, easy to see and empathize with. I know Denzel Washington, so I can immediately see him in my head, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but you forgot about the card. <laughs> okay, You have to remember the card, Elizabeth. So where do you want to meet them? What do you want to talk about? Why do you choose to meet this person? You have to mm -hmm. answer those questions questions okay those were not clearly answered the beginning of your response where you said if I had the opportunity to meet a person for one day I would meet the famous actor uh, director Denzel Washington um, he is of African descent he is about six foot one he has dark hair brown eyes the New York Times has named him uh, as the greatest actor of the 21st century uh, that was a great start that was a band eight band nine start okay. after that you should have focused very quickly on his personality so not only is he extremely talented but he's very hard working he has uh, been in over a dozen uh, multi-million dollar films in the last 20 years uh, and he has directed more than five uh, blockbuster movies in the last five years okay great now we know a lot about his action and personality and then making sure to answer the card so I would uh, love to uh, meet with him in Beverly Hills it's one of the nicest neighborhoods in the US we could sit down for a very expensive cup of tea while we uh, discussed his career and his personal life in all honesty I have a little crush on him and it would just be fantastic to get a chance to meet him in real life. And it's okay to say that. So if you say to the examiner, I have a little bit of a crush on this guy and you know, <laughs> I wanna meet with him. The examiner's not again, maybe gonna smile, but not judge you, but it's great. It's great content, okay? Yes. <laughs> all right. We all have our you know famous people crushes um, and it's reality and it's totally okay to, to say that politely in a, in a presentation like that. Uh, it gives you confidence too, right? Um, so yes. you want to answer those questions, okay? Okay, All right. yes, I missed them. All right, if you don't answer those questions, then that beautiful band eight that you have at the beginning with that really strong start begins to decrease. And then it drops from that band eight to like a band six, 6.5, okay? Okay. Okay. So make sure to check the card. That's my biggest advice to you because I think if you check the card and you answer those questions, you'll get a band eight. If you don't, you're going to get a band 6.5 like this. Okay. I know. I know. Thank you. Adrian. All right. yes. Elizabeth, wonderful. What I would recommend that you do is once okay. this class is finished or when you have a little bit of time today or tomorrow, try this question again and just start the same way, but then include the answers to the rest of the questions. Okay. Okay. All right. Elizabeth, good job. We'll talk again. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, for the opportunity. Bye, Elizabeth. Bye. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right. Elizabeth is in the same time zone as me, I think, more or less. So she is working hard. She's up at 7.40 in the morning uh, practicing with me. So on... Uh, 
uh, Saturday. It is Saturday, yes. Um, so on a Saturday, Elizabeth is up early morning uh, on YouTube. And for some of you, I know it's the opposite. You're here late at night uh, still uh, practicing, which is great. Uh, let's reach out to Miguel here. Ghazi, I see you there. Shucks that I see you. So don't, uh, don't threat. Uh, there's somebody with no name. I'm really curious how that's happening. But uh, anyway, we'll reach out to Miguel here first. Miguel, are you ready? Okay, let's give Miguel a shot. It is early morning in BC, Ghazi. Yes, it's the crack of dawn, as they say. It's when the sun is coming up. Okay. Hi, Miguel. Hello, Professor. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking, Miguel. Uh, Miguel, is this our first time interacting? Yeah, this is my first time here. Okay, great. I thought so. Miguel is a very familiar name, but I don't recall speaking to you before. Miguel, can you tell me where you are? Well, I'm from Venezuela, but I am currently living here in Chile. I came here four years and 10 months ago, approximately. Okay, so Venezuela, were you in Caracas? No, I am from Puerto Mo, uh, Puerto Cabello City, exactly. Okay, all right, I'm a little bit familiar. I've had friends from Venezuela, so I'm a little bit familiar with its geography, but not uh, not exactly. That's great. And uh, what brought you to Chile? Uh, sorry? What brought you to Chile? So why did you move from, if I may ask, from Venezuela to Chile? Yes, I move on here. Well, the first uh, nation that I visited was Peru. I used to be there for one year and four months, and then I decided to to come here mm -hmm. uh, for four years and ten months approximately here in Chile. Okay, great. Yeah, it's a uh, Central America. And why are you taking the IELTS exam? Because I would like to study auto mechanic in, in Canada, exactly in a university which is called New Brunswick. Okay, so you're looking for uh, studying at New Brunswick University. That's great. Um, that's uh, kind of closer to Ghazi than to me on the other side. That's closer to Newfoundland, but uh, that's great. Awesome. Okay, well, let's uh, let's help you get there. I see that you're a premium student. That's good for you. That's great. Uh, make sure you're using the course every single day, Miguel, and using all the assets there. Um, all right, uh, let me start you off for this part two cue card, and then I will give you feedback as I have done with uh, your uh, previous uh, peers that uh, volunteered. Here we go. So let's continue with part two. Talk about a person you want to meet for a day. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Okay. Um... If I had to choose one person to, to speak up uh, for one day, I would choose my cousin, which is called Daniel Gonzalez. He's living in Texas he's right now. And I would like to meet uh, with him uh, because he uh, told me um, to know about um, the culture in that place. Additionally, I, he told me that uh, he could teach me uh, about mechanic because I love repairing car. That's the only thing that I, uh, career that I would like to study in Canada. And subsequently, uh, he told me that the, the life of living in that place is very good enough. So for the reason, uh, I mean, uh, the person is uh, neither tall nor short. He has a uh, light complexion and dark brown, brown hair too. And um, yes, uh, because uh, we have plenty of time without seeing uh, since we were uh, living in Venezuela. Uh, it was my neighborhood. And since then, he, uh, when he moved to Texas, he told me to get there. But uh, unfortunately, I told him that I couldn't be there for a while because I'm preparing to do the IELTS test to move on to Canada. Because the Canadian immigration told me uh, that I just need the IELTS uh, certificate with her. That's the, the only reason I, that I want to uh, see him uh, again. And not only to uh, talk about the culture in that place, but also to teach me about uh, how repairing car in this uh, Okay. Uh, in I will stop you there and we'll move on to part three. 
Okay. All right. Um, your fluency, uh, band eight. Um, your pronunciation, band six. Your um, coherence, uh, band six. Your grammatical range, a uh, band eight. Your grammatical accuracy, a uh, band five to six. Um, so your overall score here would be about a band six, okay? On, on according okay. to the IELTS, all right. So that would be uh, the the detailed uh, response there. Um, and again, uh, what you can do and what others can do too is you can listen to this part of the YouTube video. It will be on the channel and then you can um, uh, hear Miguel say this again and kind of think about, okay, where are those grammatical mistakes? Where are okay. those language mistakes? So the points, uh, Miguel, to really pay attention to when you're studying and when you're practicing your speaking is to speak clearly to speak with better grammar more accurate grammar okay so notice okay. how I said that your fluency is a band-aid means you're very fluent okay uh, it's a good idea to sacrifice some of your fluency for better grammar and um, okay. there are a lot of students like this Miguel there are a lot of students who have seen a lot of English heard a lot of English watched a lot of English movies used English a fair bit in everyday life but not so much formal English training so not necessarily like a lot of technical English speaking writing grammar and so you kind of end up with this fluent but flawed form of English, okay? okay. So uh, what you want to do is, like I said, slow down, okay? And sacrifice fluency for grammar to increase scores. So what I mean is, if you speak slower but more accurately, you will get a band seven, okay? okay. So speak slower and more accurately to quickly improve. Uh, do you have a exam date? Like, uh, do you have a day when you're going to sit the IELTS exam? Do you know? Yes. When are you going to sit the exam? Well, uh, when I have that money, because <laughs> um, I don't have that money for a while. Yeah, it's expensive. Okay, so it, let's say in the next few months, right? So over the next couple of months, definitely, definitely, uh, when you're practicing your English, lots of writing, okay? Writing and reading, because writing and reading helps you to figure out accurate grammar. And then whenever you read and write, make sure to also speak. So read aloud. When you write, say what you're writing okay and then really pay attention to the technical aspects because the reality is uh, Miguel I can understand you and a lot of English speakers will understand you but the IELTS examiner will not give you a seven even though they understand you okay so it's not about being understood it's about using good English for a band seven right okay keep that in mind okay. um, so here for example like in the beginning you said if I had to choose one person to speak up for one day uh, that's strange speak up means speak louder it's a it, it has a different meaning right so I know that okay. what you tried to say here is if I had to choose one person to speak to for okay. one day I would choose my cousin um, so pay attention to that really and the pronunciation you, a lot of the words it was quite clear some of the words I had to really kind of pay attention and do a double take to figure out okay that's the word that you're using so pay attention to grammar as well okay okay um, but you're on the right track now Miguel also content okay pay attention to content so you said that you want to meet with your cousin who lives in Texas because he knows a lot about cars how does he know a lot about cars well uh, he's a mechanic Okay, does he have his own shop or does he work for a shop? Uh, he, he work for a shop. Okay. And does he just fix cars or does he build cars? Uh, uh, fix car. How long has he been a mechanic? Uh, for about um, 10 years. Okay, just give me a second. Uh, does he fix Nissans, Mazdas, Mercedes, luxury cars, everything and anything? Hey, sorry? So does he work on just one type of car, like let's say Nissan, or does he work on a lot of different kinds of cars like BMW? Well, uh, well he has been repairing a uh, plenty of cars, I mean different cars to be okay. honest. 
Okay. So my cousin has been a mechanic for about 10 years in Texas um, at a repair shop and has fixed hundreds of cars, all different makes and models. And I would love to talk to him about some of his most challenging projects. Okay. Okay. So again, when you slow down a bit, you'll have more accurate English and you'll also have better content. Okay. Ah, so okay. just, just repeat after me. My cousin has been a mechanic for about 10 years in Texas at a repair shop and has fixed hundreds of cars of all different makes and models. I would love to talk to him about some of his most challenging projects. Okay, but uh, could you scroll up? Uh, because, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my cousin has been a mechanic for about 10 years in Texas at a, a, repair, a, a, at a repair shop and has fixed hundreds of cars, all different makes and models. And I would love to talk to him about some of his most challenging projects. Very nice, Miguel. So that's the kind of grammar fluency content that you're aiming for, okay? Yes, I All understood. Right. Awesome. Miguel, keep up the good work and save up that money. And until you get the money for the test, keep coming back, keep practicing, uh, keep uh, talking with me, okay? Okay. I am... Um... Mm -hmm. Probably I'm going to do the LTS next month or okay. in October. I'm not sure yet, but um, I have to do it as soon as possible because the Canadian immigration is waiting for me. Okay, got you. Now, my tip there for you, Miguel, is in my experience to improve your grammar, content, pronunciation uh, from your current level to let's say like, a, I'm guessing your, uh, your, your goal is around a band seven, right? Seven, seven, five. So you get that faster visa type, I'm guessing that's, or you get more points, I'm guessing. So if your goal is to get a band seven, seven, five, my recommendation, Miguel, is if you can do it in October, um, like at the end of October, so six weeks from now, then go for that, okay? Okay. All right. And if you have more questions about this, uh, definitely just send me an email and I'll, I'll give you more information, okay? Uh, yes. Um, well, I, I would like to continue practicing with you uh, about the grading skill. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in order to see my score uh, approximately, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in order to be if I can do the IELTS test soon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you can send the task one, task two uh, essays to the email, and we actually give you free score estimates, especially when you're a premium student. You get unlimited free score estimates. So just send us lots of essays, okay? Okay. Uh, I have another question. Go sir. for it, Miguel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, According to um, the YouTube channel, it says that only members, people can enter in this one. So mm -hmm. I think that I have to pay monthly uh, amount of 2,500 uh, Chilean pesos approximately. Yeah, that's through YouTube, right? So YouTube membership is different from our website membership. The website membership, we control that, but the YouTube membership is controlled more by, by Google, by YouTube. They, they control that part of it. Um, okay. So you can, but you don't have to, Miguel. When you're a premium member on our website, we really pay attention to a lot of our premium members too. So you don't have um, to be a member, but you just can't join the chat. That's the only difference, okay? So um, if you're okay with that, if you're okay with not joining the chat, then don't worry about it. If you want to join the chat as well, then you want to get the low tier membership. Don't get the higher tier, just get tier one, which I think is okay, like but, but, $1 uh, uh, US. Okay, but are there some benefits by becoming a member? Uh, for you, okay, good question. For you, because you're a premium member of the website, so for you, the only benefit, there's two. So the two benefits, if you join that first tier, the $2 per month tier, one is you can join the chat a little bit better, like Elizabeth Domenico Ghazi, right? 
And then the other benefit um, is that you you can request classes, but you can do that anyway, even as a premium member. So if you have like uh, a, a question or an idea that you want me to talk about in class, you can send an email and say, hey, Adrian, can you talk about this cue card question or this writing question in the class? And then we can look at that, okay? Ah, okay, 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 okay. okay. Right. I, I thought that uh, by becoming a, a member, um, I think that it has uh, more, you know, advantages. Well, if you're a, if you if you don't have premium membership on the website and you choose a higher tier membership on YouTube, then you can get some of the benefits that you have as a premium member, like access to the exams, etc. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank sure. you, Miguel. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk again. Bye for now. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. That was good. Those some good questions by Miguel too about uh, different memberships. Yeah, I know there's just uh, so many ways. We, we're trying to help you in so many different ways. So, um, all right. Okay. Kunwal, uh, Ghazi, um, unknown individual here. I'm not sure who that is. Um, come back uh, in uh, 30 minutes uh, for speaking part three, which will be following this topic. And I will definitely keep an eye out for you in the next class for volunteers. Uh, until then, students, um, you're all amazing individuals all around the world, whether you're in Oregon, in Chile, in Egypt, um, you're just all beautiful people and we're working towards a global community and a global world and uh, it's so important for us uh, to go in that direction especially these days we're all one people um, work together with each other volunteer with each other as well so contact each other this is student partner speaking it's not speak to Adrian of course so we created this to uh, for you to speak with each other and you can use that function for free in your my student account by clicking that student partner speaking button okay um, for everybody watching we're using our premium IELTS website uh, for these interactions uh, and uh, this one's at aehelp.com click that big red button to join our premium IELTS package uh, for general IELTS it's gieltshelp.com it's here okay uh, and uh, we'll pick it up from this point uh, in the next class starting in half an hour we're just going to take a short break stretch our legs grab a glass of water rehydrate um, until then check out aehelp.com check out gieltshelp.com check out the new video speaking video that we uh, put online and I will be back in 30 minutes. Thank you, Chen. Thank you for putting the links in the chat. Thank you, members, for your support, volunteers, for your confidence. I look forward to having all of you here back with me in 30 minutes. Bye for now, everybody.